what industry are you in? Okay, take that industry and what does the top 1% in your industry earn? And if you say, well, the top 1% of my industry earns 200 grand, well, dude, you're in a level four earning opportunity. You're not in a level 10. I was born to be a fighter, had these dreams and desires. I would be something better. Energy got a fire in my soul to keep burning a pain. That and what's up, guys? Welcome to the story behind the brand. I am so pumped for you guys listening to this podcast today. Last week we had Sam Taggart, one of the speakers for Brand X. Uh, we've had Keaton Hoskins. We've had Dan Clark. We've had some awesome conversations. I'm super pumped for this. We've been planning on this for over a month now mm -hmm. with Andy Elliott. He's blowing up in the sales world. Um, if you haven't seen him by now, you're probably not on social media like you should be. Um, he's a great dude. I went to his sales training last week. Um, absolutely crushed it, had amazing people there, met some amazing people and his entire staff is just incredible guys, by the way, mm -hmm. incredible people, all super open, uh, great conversation. So welcome to the podcast, man. Tell people, fill in the gaps a little bit about you. Yeah. So number one, an individual can be beat, but a team can't be beat. Something that's super important is if you're, you're going to build anything big in life, you're going to have to have a team. Okay. So when I started building my brand, my brand was me, which obviously your brand is you. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people think that your company is your brand, but you're really the brand mm -hmm. and people most likely will become interested in you way before they'll become interested in your company or your brand or yep. what you do. Right. Yep. So, um, I'm Andy Elliott. Um, we have uh, we train about 500,000 salespeople. We train about 10,000 companies. Um, we built a nine-figure business in three years. We literally love helping people. Um, at the end of the day, um, we just want to be real. We don't want to be frauds. Uh, we want to continually in our company, okay, change our lives, okay, before we can feel that we can change anyone else's lives. Um, so we have these things where we go like 2.0, 3.0. We constantly raise our standards. And there's a code that we live by. And number one is don't be a fraud. In our company, um, we are coaches, right? We do sell. We do lead. Mm -hmm. um, we have a fitness division. Um, we, have, we have some pretty cool stuff. Like we, we are coaches in life, life coaches that teach sales training, that teach le leadership training in all industries, and we teach fitness training. But we've learned that a lot of people that are in the industry, how we've been blowing up so fast, how we've blown up our brand is by being real. Mm -hmm. And you're going to learn, man, that a lot of people, dude, like – Whoever runs the company or whoever the influencer is or, or whoever we see on social media, maybe, right, that, that's the one, when you go to their offices and you meet their people, their people aren't like that person. Mm -hmm. And the reason why that person is, is in it for them, they're in it for their fame, they're in it for their, look, dude, this isn't about me. This is about my company. This is about my team. Mm -hmm. Elliot isn't my last name anymore. It is our movement. Mm -hmm. This truly is a movement about growing. And this is a no bullshit. Like everybody needs to understand this. Okay. The world will know if you're fucking full of shit or not. The world will know if you're real. The world will know after time, if you really take care of your wife, your kids, your family, your team, and all of those people, like you said, you do. They'll know if the stuff that you're saying is stuff that you're saying from your heart. Or if you watch Andy Frazella or David Goggins or Ed Milet and you keep repeating it on your channel. Yeah. Like people know, man, and, and part of, since this is about brand, right? Like mm -hmm. you're the content, you're the brand, mm -hmm. you're you. And what separates you and makes you different than any other company in any other place in the world is you. Yeah. So I think you need to become really aware how to continually make you better. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you how to grow your brand really quick. And I'm going to tell you how it worked with ours. Okay. Real, real quick before go we go there, I want to, I want the audience to know more about your story. So you started off in mm -hmm. sales, car sales. Is that correct? Yep. 18 this, years old, 18 years. What got you like, what got you into sales? Cause that wasn't really like when I was younger, I didn't really want to sell stuff because it was uncomfortable, but I realized really fast, if I don't learn this craft, then I'm going to be working for someone that does know, learn how to sell. Like what, inspired you to go do that i was broke listen anybody that's watching this right now if you're broke if you were raised uh and you were embarrassed if you aren't proud of your family if you don't like who you are okay learn how to sell if you can learn how to sell you can have a brand new life and the cool thing about sales is that it's teachable yeah okay like i can take any individual I can take if you stutter, I can take if you're afraid of people, I can take if you're an introvert, because I am, and I did, I stuttered, and I didn't want to talk to people, I did all of these things, and because I hated my life, and I hated the way I was raised, and I hated the way things were, mm -hmm. I was just sick of it, so I got in sales, 
And I want to tell you something, and I'm going to tell everybody this. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254, 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. Uh, 18 years old, I never had more than five bucks in my hand at one time. I never, you know, I've learned this. People that suffer when they're, in, in, in people that suffer when they're young, mm -hmm. kill it as an adult. Yeah, um, that. People that have the trend a, line anyways with that. Yeah, I mean, like, do like if you get your ass kicked when you're younger, you, you want to make it when you're older, okay? But if you've been babied or you've been given everything when you're young, like, dude, when you're older, like, you've already had it. You've already been able to eat. Look, my kids, everywhere we go to eat, you know, going out to eat is normal. Buying what they want is normal. Going to the mall and picking out, you know, um, some some shoes that cost eight hundred dollars is very just it's just a part of normal like process stuff that we do together. I don't spoil them. I treat them like freaking entrepreneurs. Yeah. I tell them the truth and I make them strong kids. I got three of them. Mm -hmm. But dude, as I, as a kid, like, dude, we never got to pick out a freaking piece of gum in the store. Okay, <laughs> like so, like now I just want to say, like now sales when I was eighteen. Yeah. I made a $1,700 commission on my very first day on a sales job. I had a lay down. I got very lucky. But the minute that my manager showed me that I just made a $1,700 commission, I swore on my life that sales was my way out. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, I was right. By the time I was 20 years old, I was making 500 grand a year selling cars. Okay. Now listen, I don't care what vehicle you're in. And I don't mean vehicle like a car. Like I, mean, I don't care what industry you're in. Okay. Are you in a level 10 earning opportunity? What industry are you in? Okay, take that industry and what does the top 1% in your industry earn? And if you say, well, the top 1% of my industry earns 200 grand, well, dude, you're in a level four earning opportunity. You're not in a level 10. Mm -hmm. But if you say, well, I'm in real estate and the top 1% makes 20 million, mm -hmm. like, bro, like, or whoever you are, like, get good. Yeah. Come on, man. Like, 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 you can earn the 20 million. You just have to know what the guy that makes 20 million knows. And the cool thing about the era that we're in right now, and even like this podcast, is that you find people who have gone where you want to go, you study the shit out of them, and you emulate everything you're, they're doing. You well, that's model. why I'm here, dude. <laughs> yeah. That's why I'm here right Yeah, now. but that's the truth, man. Yeah. And, and I want to tell you how to sell. I'm going to tell you how to sell real quick. Let me tell you how to sell anybody, anyone. Number one, you keep their goals at the center of the decision, which you heard me say this and weekend. that was probably one of my biggest takeaways. Okay, you want me to give you the next one? Let's hear it. And I didn't teach it this weekend, Let's okay, because I don't tell people it a lot. Yeah. When I go to close you, I'm so, you're so important to me mm -hmm. that I literally, when I'm talking to you or when I'm presenting my, 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 my product to you or whatever it is I want you to do or whatever it is that I've agreed will solve your, your problem, the solution, mm -hmm. dude, I put myself in your shoes. I can feel the pain you feel. Mm -hmm. I can feel the frustration you feel. I can feel what your mind must feel like based on all the information that I gathered from you. Mm -hmm. And literally, I just become you. Mm -hmm. And I become you live in the cell. Yeah. And that's how I can close you. Yeah. Because I know everything you're feeling. So I know you, like, everything you're going. at a very, very deep Dude, level. At, at the highest level. Yeah. My level of understanding empathy is almost sickening. And how that's did you, why. how did you gain that strength? Like, so you went into cells. How did you become such a killer? Like you are now, like just practice, 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 or what's the thing that really separates you over everyone else? Well, well, number one, like I can look in someone's eyes and the eyes are the window to the soul. They tell you what's going on. I can tell whenever people are nervous, I can tell that, listen, this world right now, common sense, it's 2024 stuff's more expensive. Okay. Uh, money, you know, like is down here because things cost up here. Mm -hmm. People are naturally going to be apprehensive to spend more money. They know it's going to happen. They know in order to get that, they got to spend more money. But that's the reason why you got to be good at sales. You got to paint pictures. You got to tell stories. You got to influence. You got to persuade. You got to make, you know, relationships with people. You got to know how to build rapport. You got to make trust. Mm -hmm. Like, dude, salespeople are so dumb. They don't even get people to trust them. <laughs> But like all these things, these are things that um, I would say separate the great uh, from the amateurs, yeah. the pros from the amateurs. Um, but, but anyways, I just was saying I sold when I was young. I learned very quickly. The better I got, the more I felt comfortable about me, yeah. the more, you know, people felt comfortable about me. And like Kobe Bryant mastered basketball. I mastered speaking. I mastered, mastered sales. And dude, like there's no limits. There's no end. Even to this day. Every day I listen to people, I learn new word tracks, I learn new language. Mm -hmm. I watch the way that people work. 
book. Like I'm learning everything. I am a student of the game. Yeah. I study it 25 yeah. seven. When did you <laughs> go over to start actually coaching other people in the cells? And what was that thought process that got, did you experience any type of imposter syndrome into that? Or were you like, fuck no, I got this. Well, so very simply, you learn how pay works. Okay. Yeah. I'm a sales guy. I'm getting paid 30% commission as a sales guy when I was young. Mm -hmm. And I'm making a lot of money. And then my manager wants me, or the general manager wants me to go into management. And I'm like, no, because I they get paid two and a half percent, but off the whole team. Yeah. But there's 20 people. Well, at the end of the day, I'm out working the other 20 people. The other 20 people don't want to go to work. They're like having to babysit them all day. Sure. So finally, when I took the position, I was like, if I don't teach these guys, if I don't brainwash these people mm -hmm. to want to care, to want to give more, to want to do what I did when I sold, mm -hmm. I'm going to be freaking broke. Mm -hmm. So I can't move up if I can't teach them what I'm doing. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, is that I took a lot of people that this is when I was selling. I, when I was in my, when I was like 21, 22, I start dusting, I'm dusting everyone on the floor. Mm -hmm. But when I move up into leadership, I had to make them be able to do what I did when I dusted them. So I started teaching them everything. I started slowing down. And the cool thing is I started to watch their life change. Mm -hmm. I started to watch them make more money. Yeah. Now I'm making more money, but I'm realizing that watching them make more money is actually more attractive than me making money. More fulfilling. Yeah, dude. Like, and, and what happens is, you know, one, and everybody's going to experience this, but, but also once you start teaching people, dude, that's when you really get good. Like, one, that's one when you become mentors, dangerous. One of my earliest mentors said, as soon as I teach you this, guys, I want you to go out and start teaching. And inside, Facts. I'm like, why? I don't know it. But what he was saying is you learn it so mm -hmm. much faster Repetition. when you start coaching and teaching. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that. If you wiped my mind tomorrow, I would still go out and start coaching. Mm -hmm. Right? Why? Because I'm going to learn it faster. And I feel like being a good coach isn't necessarily knowing the information. It's knowing how to facilitate transformation. Mm -hmm. What, I mean, you know... I've been coaching for a lot of years. What has been the biggest curve with you getting into coaching? Well, number one, um, again, I, uh, well, there's a lot of answers to that, but, but I, I think that people right now, um, sales is their way out. Um, I, I want to tell you who I'm here for. Yeah. Okay. I'm here for the broken. Okay. Uh, truly. I, I love the people right now that got a lot of money. I appreciate you. I love you. I'd love to help you grow. Um, I'd love to help you break through new barriers. We built a nine figure business in three years. Let's talk about making some big money. You want to go from eight figures to nine. I'm totally cool with talking to you how we do that, dude. But that's not, a, that's not the story. Most of the time I want to find people that were broken. Like me, I want to find people that are lost. Like that were lost. Like I was, I want to find people who have been betrayed. I want to find people who have given up belief on themselves. Those are my people. Okay. Like, like I love everyone else. Like, dude, if you have all your shit together, like I want to run with you, like, let's go. But all the people that are broken, like I was, those are the people that I want because those are the most dangerous people in the room. I swear on my life. So that's, that's why I got in coaching, man, because you know, like there's gotta be a point at one time in your life w with whatever you do in which you say, all right, now I want fulfillment. Now I want purpose. And that's my goal. I swear on my life, man. Dude, you, you'll find a guy will pay me for something and I'll find out that he's like broke, broken, um, you know, struggling. And I'm more attracted to that individual than anyone, especially if they're willing and able. Okay. If they'll put in the work, if they're, if they're, you know, if they're able, like, Hey, like I'll, I'll do whatever you say. Like I'm all in man. And, and I'm turning a lot of these guys. Is that Cause you feel like it was a version of you that you're helping facts. Every one of them, man. And dude, I was screaming for a freaking leader. Dude, the whole world is thirsty for leaders right now. Absolutely. The, every company is thirsty for leaders. Your family is thirsty for a leader. So like all I want to do, and this is the truth, okay? Forget about money. Forget about everything. It's time to go create, and I said this word a lot, a revolution of people that start fighting for their families again and that literally wake the hell up. And by the way, like your brand is the way that you work on yourself. Your brand is the way that you're aware if I'm a fraud, if I'm doing things right, if I don't like who I am, <clears throat> you can fix all this. You can fix everything um, just like I can fix yeah. it. But, but it's so cool when you have somebody, this is the coolest thing, that has been successful, that honestly hasn't outgrown the underdog. And so as much money as we've made and as big as a business as we're building and the dreams that we have, all those things include me hunting out the lost men and women in the world and finding people 
that have a lot of potential, who are broken, and who have forgotten it, given up on, on themselves, and don't know it. And once you can just light a little spark in their ass, dude, they become the most dangerous son of a bitch in the room. Yeah. And that's what I'm after, man. So, like, like I love broken people, man. Like, turn your wounds into your weapons. Like, I love finding broken people. I swear on my life. If I, I am building an army in the Elliott group mm-hmm. of people who are broken, and these broken people are now amazing mentors to other people. They're doing things that, that the best, most highest producing people that I knew before that everybody thought I should have hired that I didn't couldn't do. Yeah. And it's just crazy. Yeah. I love it, man. I, I love all your people here and they're, you can tell they're a version, they're a version of you, but <coughs> you know, on this podcast, we talk about branding mm-hmm. and what I've noticed over the years is the word brand has been branded, mm-hmm. right? Everyone when you hear the word brand, everyone thinks of it differently. Like when you say go brand yourself mm-hmm. or yeah, what does that mean? Or what, that means- should it, what should it mean? Because when I first got in the business, I thought branding was just the superficial thing that you did to try to pretend something that you're not mm-hmm. and come full circle. What branding really is, is showcasing really who you are mm-hmm. on the inside, on the outside and mm-hmm. branding starts internally ever that's, before it starts externally that's right and so when people say they've built their brand and they have a graphic well that's not a fucking brand that's, that's a, a logo that's a, yeah that's a gra- yeah it's a logo it's a graphic and it's not going to do much for you it won't do anything yeah, for you it won't it's do like much. having a website nobody cares yeah it's, it's like judging someone based upon how they wear it's how they represent themselves mm-hmm. but that's not who they are so when you say when we're talking to the audience here and you say go brand yourself what does that mean and where do they start yeah so when, when I think about branding, what I think is the way that we onboard people when they meet us. Okay, so you came in here, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Elliot Army, the Elliot Group. When you came in here, how did our people meet you? How did they greet you? Mm-hmm. I think when I first saw you, it was online. Mm-hmm. And you want to hear my first thoughts when I saw you online? It was probably extreme. You probably said, I don't like this guy. No, no, it wasn't. I, I, did, I did like you. I was like... I was like, fuck, I'm an easy sell. He's going to sell me for sure. <laughs> yeah. I knew it. I knew you were going to sell me and your boy over here, Brandon, he's a stud, man. Yeah. Like. Yeah, he's a killer. He's a fucking awesome dude. Mm-hmm. And so, and I know he speaks so highly of you too. And so he did such an amazing job. And um, yeah, I was just wanting to come to the event. And next thing I know, dude, I'm freaking handing my credit card. Say, let's fucking go. Let's do this. Well, and listen, it would be a disservice if Brandon didn't take your credit card. Okay. Let me explain this to you. And this is why sales is so important. Mm -hmm. So our brand is real. And by the way, once you saw that we were real, then you said, okay, I want to spend more money. Okay. Because it's so hard to find something that's real. Mm -hmm. So the Elliott group has core values all over, all of our TVs, all of our walls. As you walked around our company, it says Elliott army 3.0, right? Mm -hmm. And you can read through the things Mm -hmm. as you walk in, we must make sure that you understand that those things are real. That's the way we live. That's the way that we operate. Number one, you become family immediately. You got to understand this, okay? This is a very hard concept to get. Mm -hmm. Elliot Army, which is all the people that work in the Elliot Group, we got together and decided to show everybody in this world, they don't have to prove it to us that they're going to buy before we give them our best. Mm -hmm. Anybody that we run in place, anybody we run into at the grocery store, at the gym, in our own building, anywhere, anywhere we run, anybody that we come across, We shake your hand. We give you a hug. We show you love. And people at this point say, that's stupid. It's so stupid that we're one of the fastest growing companies in the world right now. So be careful and hold that thought. Okay. Well, well, before you finish, I, I view my clients as family and I, and I tell our clients, why wouldn't you view your clients as family? Because you wouldn't have food on the table. You wouldn't have the house that you're on. Like everything that your family gets to enjoy is from your clients. So how are they not family? Yeah, well, it, it's it's because people honestly just don't care. I think that, it's just, yeah, they just... No, they just don't care. Like, the deal is, is that... I think some people are just disconnected. They get so burned out with people and... Yeah, well, I but think, see, see, you shouldn't have a coaching company if you're burned out because people don't burn out. They lose their purpose. Yeah. Okay? And that's why all these frauds are coming to light right now. That's why you got all these companies that aren't doing it right getting taken out. So my advice to you and to everybody and even to myself would be to, number one, stay grounded. Stay grounded. I am that kid that at 18 years old was broke and, I'd, and I've never had more than $5 in my hand. Mm-hmm. Sales changed my life. Okay, sales and leadership will make you rich. It'll change your whole entire family legacy. It'll change your bloodline. Yeah. Okay, now 
Now I gotta go teach sales and leadership to the world. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor, I'm gonna tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254. 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. Now, in any industry, I need to make sure that people know how to influence, persuade, close, sell. I need to know how they, they, they know how to speak, they know how to talk, they know how to have confidence, they know how to believe in themselves, they know how to articulate their words. We gotta give them some new language. Like, we gotta do all these things, and we gotta do it now. Because the era to win right now, there's so much money, this world will give you whatever you want right now if you'll become great right now. The marketplace is dying to reward you now. So I gotta teach them how to sell. And I wanna say something. You said, you know, I gave Brandon my credit card. It, Brennan would be doing you a disservice if he didn't take your credit card. The reason why is because we don't suck at what we do. We are really good at what we do. So if we're good at what we do, we need to make sure that you do do the training with you because us. Because if you don't, you could stay the same, number one, or two, you could continue to struggle with things that you struggle with. Or even worse, three, you could end up training with some other guy that you waste your money with and freaking screws you over. So he better take your card because we're going to do our job and we're going to change your life. Mm -hmm. And dude, our families know that we live to do this. My children, go ask them what we do. My dad teaches people sales uh, and leadership and fitness. That's all we care about. Mm -hmm. That's all we want to do is change people's lives. All we actually care about is transformation. Mm -hmm. and, every, and by the way, sales creates money transformation. Sales creates transformation in mindset and confidence. Fitness creates transformation in mindset and confidence. Mm -hmm. Dude, like all this shit like flows together. That's why we picked the th main three things, yeah. you know, which is fitness, um, leadership, and then sales. But if you want to get rich, leadership and sales. Yeah. And then if you want to get rich and be around for a long time and, and, you know, have your family love who you are and you actually want to like yourself, you got you to throw fitness on there. Yeah. And you don't just sprinkle it. You got to have total immersion in it. And one of the things that I know you're going to do is you're going to continue on this 3.0 journey mm -hmm. to build the best body you've ever had in your entire life for you. Mm -hmm. That's not for any girlfriend. That's not for your kids. That's like for it, you. It has to be. Yeah. Some people make fun of me because I lift up my shirt and I check my abs. They're like, oh, you're so vain. I was like, no, 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 no. You're, you're not. You're, no, you're looking at it from a that, different. You're view. checking yourself. I'm seeing when I lift up my shirt and look at my abs, that's saying, how good have you been at your water? How good have you been sleeping? Yeah. How good have you been eating? It's not a vain thing. It's I, a score. I give a shit whether you think I'm attractive or not. I've already went through that whole identity crisis of I am my body. I'm not my body. It's a representation of who I am. Mm -hmm. So I, I love that you talk about that. And uh, I talk about it like you like you got to fit your brand. And mm -hmm. you talked a lot about your event. Like if you walk in the room and I'm sure you've had a lot of people say, oh, you fat shame people. And, and I heard you talking as if you've received a lot of shit from that have you received a lot of shit people saying that you're fashion no no but but a lot of people just see so social media right yeah like you you can only understand what you see on social media right but pe what people don't understand is this so the people that i'm with in rooms mm -hmm. when i'm talking on social media yeah. those people have paid a lot of money yeah. to come into those rooms sure. and they've and they've opted in to me telling them the truth Mm -hmm. they've asked me to give them the cold, hard truth. Mm -hmm. They said, Andy, don't feed me ice cream like a, like a little kid and make me feel good. Yeah. Please tell me the truth. I'm here to change. I'll, I obviously look up to you. Just tell me what to do. And I say, dude, we are going to start working on you. Mm -hmm. And then basically we like hold each other accountable. And by the way, it's called positive peer pressure. Okay. Negative peer pressure would be me asking someone to do drugs. Okay, could you imagine this? Andy Elliott has these events and he gets drunk with them. Mm -hmm. Andy Elliott has these events and he and he and he does drugs with them. Okay, they're saying Andy Elliott has events and he and he tells people that they need to get healthier for their family so they can win bigger. Mm -hmm. I mean, come, what are we talking about? Like, like, but that's why I explain it because people on social media don't understand. But yeah. if you've been in the room with me, mm -hmm. if you've, if you've seen my heart, if you know my intentions yeah. and I'm going to say one last thing, dude, my life, my life changed when my wife told me, dude, you're getting fat, you're getting comfortable, mm -hmm. you're better than this. Yeah. And dude, when she told me that I got pissed, I needed to get pissed to change. Mm -hmm. I thank God every day for her having the courage to tell me the truth. Mm -hmm. Dude, she went a couple years without telling me the truth. She went a couple years being the good wife, you know, keeping her mouth shut, not, not, not bringing up that her husband was getting soft. Mm -hmm. Okay? And all it did was make me worse. Yeah. Thank God she had the courage one day to tell me the truth. 
dude, that's all we want. We just yeah. want to be around people that want to see us do better. Yeah. And that's when these people come in these rooms. They come in there and they ask for me to speak to them, to them the truth, but they don't see the other nine hours of buildup around that. Mm -hmm. They just see the short clip. Yeah. So, But that's why I want to tell you, man, that yeah. um, my family is all fat. Okay? Like my family. So, like, you need to know that, like, the minute that I quit doing all these things mm -hmm. that I'm talking about, like, I know where I'm going. Yeah. So I have to take care of this. See, I'm not I'm the opposite. If I don't work out, I turn skinny, but see, but for, everybody for man, does something for a man. I almost feel like that's worse. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I'm sure people would love to trade me the, the whole genetic. Yeah, but we all it, have but, our, our, yeah. our, our deal we're fighting against. You know what I'm saying? Um, but the main deal is, is that your brand, you know, like your brand, like is you mm -hmm. and it's your company and it's the way that you onboard people when they meet you. Um, if you go to social media, and you, and you just grab a pen, piece of paper, and you write down everything that I say on every reel, mm -hmm. you'll look at it and you'll be like, dude, look at his message. Mm -hmm. Like, like, like I just, I, I'm getting tense about it, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes I'll, I'll communicate with someone else. And I'm, I'm going to give a little secret. One of the reasons why I tend to involve somebody else when doing social media is because my social media blows up. I can do a reel where I'm telling what I would do with someone else or what someone else should do. It'll get a couple hundred thousand views. I'll do it with someone and speak to them as I'm telling them what they should do, and it'll do five million views. When there's someone else interacting with me, okay, on a reel, it's insane. Yeah. And that's why you'll see if you watch my YouTube content, or you'll watch my Instagram, most of the time you'll see me communicating to someone else. Yeah, that's a good tip. Yeah, so I just want to tell everybody, like yeah. the brand tip to 2024 is that, dude, listen to me. Everybody's just saying shit to their camera. Yeah. Like, let, let, let's see you go out and teach it. Yeah. I want to see you do it live. Yeah, I love that. I want to see the other person. I want to see how they receive it. And by the way, have you seen how all the people receive it that I talk to? Mm -hmm. They're all like, hell yeah, man, I'm going to change. Yeah. You know, like, like why? Because, dude, like, that, they've been waiting for someone to tell them the truth. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say, like, brand tip. No, that's a really good tip. Keep someone yeah, in there with you. that's a really good tip. And I have a lot of footage that I need to go through that I interact with people. But I don't know why I always default to that. So that was really impactful for me. Yeah, and I'm going to give you one more. Yeah, Make go. sure your thumbnails. Make sure your thumbnails show someone else in them with you. Okay. Okay, and whether you're pointing at somebody mm -hmm. or whether you're talking to them or something, yeah. because if they see that thumbnail where you're interacting with somebody, mm -hmm. the title is obviously important. Mm -hmm. The thumbnail and what they see that you're doing, mm -hmm. that thumbnail doesn't even have to be from that video. Okay. Okay, it doesn't have to be. Like, sure. like think outside the box. Yeah. That can be a thumbnail from something else, but show that you're engaging with someone else. And then when it gets into the video, if they see you engaging, like, they love it, man. Nice. Yeah. One more thing before we go, um, and I've enjoyed this conversation, yeah. uh, by the way. Um, one thing that I know a lot of my listeners, one thing that I really preach to is building a brand is building a culture offline. Mm -hmm. And I think everyone should be doing some type of event, whether it's a retreat, a workshop, mm -hmm. a seminar. What was that thing or that epiphany was like, man, I got to start doing more trainings and get bigger trainings and get on more stages and learn the art of speaking and storytelling. When did that become like really apparent to you that you needed to learn this craft? 2019, I went to an event. It was a Shark Tank, Grant Cardone deal. And um, I fly out to Florida. Mm -hmm. The night before was like a meet and greet. Mm -hmm. um, I'm an introvert. I just started my business. Mm -hmm. Now, listen, when I, sit, when I worked for someone else, I was deadly when I was at my job. Mm -hmm. But when I left, I didn't want to talk to nobody. Sure. I had to learn all this very quickly. Remember, I built my business really quick because mm -hmm. that's what we do. We self-develop, we learn. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you what made me decide to start doing live events because I, I saw the way that people were getting treated at live events and it ate me alive. And so my first live event, I, I, I go to the meet and greet and I notice all the cool people, all the people who are you know really outspoken, who don't, you know, people you know that, that aren't me yet, right? Mm -hmm. They're all in the middle and they're all talking and life's good. And then I look around on the outside of the walls where I am mm -hmm. because I'm nobody. I just decided to, I quit my W2 job and I wanted to start my sales training company. So I wanted to learn, right? And I noticed that no one's paying attention to any of us. And I look around and there's a lot, I think I paid 10 grand to get, in, to, get to that event. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was at least a hundred people just sitting around, you know, not paying attention. You know, nobody was talking to them. And I was like, dude, 
Like I, I would, I would never have an event and not pay attention to people like that. Yeah. So, so I, I went, I walked over and there was this girl and I asked her, I said, Hey, um, you know, how are you enjoying your event? And she goes, I think I'm at the wrong place. I, I, I think I shouldn't have come because they didn't make her feel welcome. Welcome. I went to another guy and he was like, mm, I think I made a mistake coming here. And I realized, dude, that when you're killing it and you're doing great and you put these events on, man, there's a lot of people that believe in you that, that want to learn how to build their business with you or want to learn how to do something. When they come to your event, dude, you got to make them feel like they're the most important fucking person in the world. And that's why you see the way we treat people at my event, which will probably make sense now. So, I went back home immediately. I changed my plane flight. I saw enough. I didn't even need to get training. Yeah. And I went home and I created the Master Closer Seminar. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to take 80 people at 997. I got on YouTube and I told them. And literally, boom. I sold it out in two days. Everybody that came, I showed them massive love. Yeah. I took care of them. And it was the most amazing thing. And I said, dude, I'm going to do these every month for the rest of my life. And now we've done like 50 in a row. And every month, you know, we have four or 500 people that come in. And we just show them lots of love. And you'll notice, is anybody standing in the corner? No ways. Not at our events. Dude, at our events, dude, the second you come in, dude, they show you massive love, man. Mm -hmm. Like, it's the craziest thing. You saw that. Does anybody feel left out at our place? Yeah. Hell no. Well, they're the most important person, so why wouldn't they be? Well, because, but, but other events, that doesn't happen. And, and, and just test me and go to a couple and you'll see. They may say hello to you, but you're going to sit down and you're going to go through the vent. Yeah. We treat you like you're the most amazing person that has ever been born. Yeah. That's our brand. Yeah. Okay? So you ask why, uh, why the live events? Why do we learn how to speak? Why do we learn all this stuff? It's because I think that the, the fastest way to change somebody's life in a paradigm shift is in a live event, yeah, which, which you're doing one in yeah. September. And we're going to kick ass at that event. And we're going to make sure everybody feels lots of love. And we're going to change their life. People will walk in one way and leave another. Yeah, we've had some awesome experiences, and uh, Brand X is going to be like anything you guys have ever been into. And yeah, I'm we're going to rock that yeah, shit. Oh, I'm going to make sure that that happens. So That's I'm right. Super pumped. I'm super pumped you're a part of it, man. Thank um, you. One last question. Uh, who do you think could deadlift more, me or you? Probably you. I hate deadlifting. <laughs> so you don't like deadlift? No, but the fact that you asked me, <laughs> look, if anybody ever asks who you think can bench press more than me and you, I'm like, you. What, what, what's your lift? What's your lift that you... I mean, squat, I can probably squat 650. Yo. I mean, I can squat heavy, but deadlift, I think I can deadlift maybe 450, right, yeah. is what I can deadlift, but I'm not a fan of it. I messed my back up when I was yeah. young, yeah. so I'm like ultra, like, that's not my lift. Yeah. But but I will deadlift 225, yeah. you know, for 20 or something, or 185 for 20, and, mm -hmm. and, and nice and smooth and good controlled reps and stuff, like, I'm cool with that. As I've gotten older, I'm 44. I just don't like to go super heavy. You know, there was a saying when I was younger that it was really hard for me to really adopt that, which is leave your ego at the door because mm. you want to lift so much weight, especially when you're younger, high school and college. Mm -hmm. I think as you get older, I think it's, I want to move good. I want to feel good. Yeah. You don't and, even need a lot of muscle to put, I mean, a lot of weight to so put like muscle on. Your deadlift is my squat. My squat doesn't feel good. Just mm -hmm. like your deadlift doesn't feel good. That's right. Right. Yeah. So. And you got to, you, and listen, as you get older, you get smart, you listen to your body. Yeah. You know, and if your body says, eh, I don't know about this, dude, just don't do it. Because at the end of the day, if you get injured and you're out for six months, you just gain, you just lost all the shit you gained the last six months. Mm -hmm. Like that would suck. Yeah. So, but yeah, yeah we're going to smash. And I'm glad you say that because when we see your videos, I could, sometimes people might get the impression, oh, I need to work out even though I don't feel good and I have injured. And so that's, that's really refreshing. For yeah. Me. Yeah. So you know, your body, you got to listen to it, yeah. man. I mean, dude, if you, if you don't feel good and you're sick, you taking three days off to recover is better than you running your body through the ringer, you know, and, it, and that doesn't mean you don't go out for a walk or something, but it doesn't mean you have to kill yourself, dude, because your goal is to heal up and then yeah. go kill it. And that brings me to one last question too. Like I see you're super intense guy and I can get intense and work, work, work. Like how do you, how do you know when to take that time off in a way that doesn't feel like you're slacking on your goals or you're giving into your, you know, your wants and everything? Like, well, I, I said, I set a runway every 90 days. Mm -hmm. I set a runway every 90 days where I go somewhere with my family every 90 days. Mm -hmm. I work my ass off and then 90 days, I know that runway's there. Mm -hmm. And I go leave and I, I go with my family okay. somewhere. And it happens every 90 days. And then also every week, um, once a month, every week, I block off some special family time with my family. doesn't mean I'm not working. Mm -hmm. 
but I make sure that we're doing something on those nights. And then on the weekend, I spend a lot of time with my, my kids, and then I go home at night, and I make sure I eat dinner with them. And do listen, like, it's not always going to be perfect. There's times that we've been in the office till 2 a.m., mm-hmm. and our kids don't see us for 24 hours. Yeah. It's the truth. Mm-hmm. But you know what? They know what we're doing. Okay, because we brought them with us, yeah. and they understand it, and they know we love them. And the and I next think that's day we important make for them to see that too. Yeah, so yeah. that's the goal. Take your family with you. Yeah, I love it. How can people follow you? What's the best way for people to follow you? Yeah, dude, I would just go say go to in, official Andy Elliott okay. on Instagram. I mean, Instagram is a great place to go watch fifteen second videos. We drop four of them a day. Mm-hmm. They're always a great message inside of them. It's very quick to watch. Or if you want to watch some really long form content, like some really training, maybe from events and stuff like that, mm-hmm. um, I would say go to YouTube. Okay. YouTube's badass. You know, our YouTube channel just hit 500,000. And, you know, building a YouTube channel is, is, uh, is, was hard. Building everything else has been really easy, but YouTube has been a grinder, yeah. um, especially because I'm not playing cat videos. Yeah. Sales training videos at 500,000, that's hard. Um, but you know, cat videos, I'd be at 10 million A subscriber on YouTube is worth like a hundred followers on Instagram. In my opinion. Yeah, it truly, it truly is. Yeah. Yeah. we we'll be at a million by Christmas on Instagram for right. sure. So, cool. but. all right. Hey man, I really appreciate your time and I know you're super busy no, guys go it. follow them, learn how to sell, be looking out for more about brand X is going down September 6th and 7th. I'm super pumped. We're going to be having uh, more speakers. We're going to be doing more trainings. Okay, be inspired in what you're doing. Be next gen. As always, the world needs you. Good stuff. Hey guys, I just want to tell you, you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.